This episode of Who Chose is brought to you by Blue Lab. Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, we're going to be taking a deep dive into pH, its effects on plants, and what it means in the context of hydroponic growing. In this video, I'm going to take you on a journey through the understanding of pH, nutrient availability. We're gonna have a look at some tools for measuring pH, as well as a closer look at what causes a nutrient solution to drift. So plants require four basic things to exist. Sunlight, water, gas exchange in the form of CO2 and O2, and mineral nutrients. In a soil environment, these mineral nutrients or hydroponic salts are absorbed from rock minerals or converted from organic material and made available to the plants by soil biology, bacteria and fungi. The ability of the nutrients to remain dissolved within solution is crucial for plant absorption and this is where pH comes into it. The diagram you're about to see up on your screen is called the Traug diagram. It's named after a soil scientist, Emily Traug, and it depicts how available a nutrient will be to a plant root based on the pH of the rhizosphere or root environment. The changes in the width of the bands represent the changes in the availability of each nutrient. Outside of the bands is where the nutrient becomes unavailable to the plants. This true diagram gives you a really good visual representation of how you can tailor the pH of solution to target specific nutrients that you're trying to deliver to your plants. In hydroponics, available means that the nutrient is fully dissolved and unavailable means that the nutrient has precipitated out of solution or essentially it's fallen out of solution and become unavailable for the plants to absorb. So what you just saw there was pH up, uh, undiluted, added into 3.0 EC nutrient solution. You can actually see precipitation of the nutrient. That's the cloudiness in that nutrient solution. So I think to properly understand how we can adjust our pH within our hydroponic systems, we need to understand a little bit about pH itself. So essentially pH is a scale ranging from zero to 14. A pH of seven is considered neutral, below seven is acidic, and above seven is alkaline. The pH scale measures the concentration of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. And we adjust our solution using acids and bases that add hydroxide or hydronium ions. Adding pH down increases hydronium ions, making the solution more acidic. And adding pH up increases hydroxide ions, resulting in a more alkaline solution. Now, the pH scale is actually logarithmic, which means that each unit change in pH results in a tenfold difference in the concentration of hydrogen ions. It's a bit deep for this video, but I actually thought it was quite interesting. So the ideal range for a nutrient solution is actually slightly acidic between 5.2 and 6.5, depending on your source. There's a lot of different information, and I usually go between 5.5 and 6.5 because it's easier to deal with in my head, but the best source I could find was 5.2 to 6.5. And to achieve this range, we can use pH measurement tools like this. This is the Blue Lab Guardian pH, EC, and temperature all in one Wi Fi monitor. It has high and low alarms for pH, temperature, and electrical conductivity, non volatile memory to keep settings through power loss, plant safe green LED backlit adjustable brightness display, 
two meter measurement cords on both the PH and EC probe, which are both waterproof. It is mains powered, so it plugs into a 110 to 240 volt power point, and it comes with an array of adapters for use in many different countries. When paired with the Blue Lab Edenic app, it allows you to access instant alarms on your mobile phone and remote monitoring of your hydroponic systems. It's collaborations like these that allow me to do as much research on a video as I have for this one. So thank you to Blue Lab for reaching out and partnering with me in this video. So like any kid with a new toy, I've really been looking forward to setting this up actually. These are the Hooch multi-buckets and this is the vertical orientation. It's a drip feed system and the video will be coming out very soon, pretty much just after the website and the buckets come out. The reason I'm installing it on this and not some of my outdoor systems is I don't need to monitor my outdoor systems because uh, the reservoirs aren't recirculating, um, whereas this one is. So this here is our EC probe and it's pretty robust, pretty much just float in the nutrient solution as far down as you'd like. But with our pH probe, because it is actually quite a delicate uh, glass probe, uh, we're just going to connect it to the side and we do that with a rubber suction cup. This drops down into our reservoir as well and we want both of those to go below the water line. If you have a look, I've got a float valve installed here. So I'm just gonna go below the float valve water line. That connects up to the base of our Blue Lab and this is replaceable because the pH probes only last so long. Connect up internally to the side. There we go. So you can see here that we have an EC of 2.8, a temperature of 29 degrees Celsius, it is really hot in here, and a pH of 6.1. And that is absolutely fine for me, and I'm actually quite happy with how easy that was to set up. I just dropped them in and we're away. And here is our Blue Lab Guardian. We click on that and it will give us our pH our EC and our temperature. And over time, it will start logging this. And we can see the shift in pH, EC and temperature over time as our plants utilize the nutrients. So the fact that we need devices like the Blue Lab Guardian is actually quite interesting to me. It makes me sort of wonder the question, why does the pH drift over time? And the answer to that is actually quite interesting. So a nutrient solution is actually made up of various ions dissolved in water. Positive ions are called cations or cations and negative ions are called anions. Now as a, for instance, nitrogen is an essential element in the growth of plants, but it also plays a major role in your nutrient solutions pH. In hydroponics, we can supply nitrogen in the form of nitrate, NO3 minus, or ammonium, NH4 plus. Nitrate is an anion, negatively charged, and ammonium is a cation, which is positively charged. Now this is where we see the nutrient solution drift. If a plant absorbs a positive ion, then it needs to excrete a negative ion to remain balanced within its cells and vice versa. So when nitrates are taken up, that's an incoming negative charge for your plant to facilitate. It does this by utilizing positive protons, H+, to power the transportation of the nitrate, NO3-, into the plant and converts it to NH3, or ammonia. So when the uptake of anions exceeds the uptake of cations, your hydroponic solution's pH rises. And conversely, the opposite is true as well. Agronomists understand this interaction between the plant's roots and the rhizosphere's pH and properly manufactured and designed nutrient solutions have a balance of elements in both anion and cation blends to help maintain a consistent nutrient solution pH long term. So in this episode, I wanted to cover more about the theory side of 
pH in hydroponics. And in the next episode in this series, we're going to cover the practical side, the solutions that we use to raise and lower the hydroponic solution to the desired pH, as well as the methods involved. That will be linked next, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose? Thank you to Blue Lab for sponsoring this video. Links in the description to where you can get the Blue Lab Guardian, and I wish you a happy hydroponicking. I'll see you next time on Who Chose. I hope that wasn't too intense. <laughs>